You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Welcome to another episode of Diakonia, A Call to Service. Diakonia is the Greek word for service and also the root word for deacon. This is a show by the diaconate community, by deacons but not for deacons only. We're here to remind you and us of our call as Christians to serve our brothers and sisters in this time of Advent to be gift to one another. I'm Deacon Jim Norman, Vicar for Deacons with the Archdiocese of Chicago, blessed to serve at Our Lady of Sorrows Basilica on the west side of Chicago. And joining me, as always, is Deacon Dave Brinsick, who's the Associate Director for the Permanent, di- permanent Office, the di- Diaconate Office, uh, who also is blessed to serve at Holy Guardian Angels in Brookfield. Today, our title is Finding Joy at Christmas, and we have with us Deacon Tom Lambert from Our Lady of Mount Carmel and Tracy Sherva from St. James in Arlington Heights. Both are members of the Mental Health Ministry for the Archdiocese of Chicago. Welcome, Tom and Tracy. Thank you, good to be here. Yes, thank you. Well, Tom and Tracy, again, welcome. Uh, Just to get started, Tom, you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the Mental Health Ministry. Okay, I'm um, a deacon for 40 years now and um, um, married and have four daughters. And our oldest daughter has a uh, severe mental illness. And so back in the um, late 1980s, uh, when her um, condition first, you know, showed itself, uh, we were looking for um, ways to help and resources and so on. and. Um, we found NAMI, National Alliance of Mental Illness, but then we also started a support through the church for people with mental illness and their families because there wasn't anything existing at the time. So um, out of that, for the, over the past 30 years, I've met some wonderful people, and one of them is Tracy Sherva. Well, you're very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so Tracy, how about yourself? Can you tell us a bit how, how your involvement got started with, the, with mental health? Yeah, I would say um, in my family, and it's, sometimes it's difficult for me to talk about it, I'll be honest, I have um, some loved ones who deal with some pretty serious mental health um, and substance abuse um, issues. And that really led me to NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, where I became a Um, family support facilitator, helping other families who were going through a lot of the things that we were going through. Um, And then I had a moment with a friend who invited me to pray the rosary with her for our kids. And that was a pivotal moment for me to recognize how important faith was in my mental health journey. And so that kind of brought me to Deacon Tom and to where we are today. Wonderful. You know, we think of this season as a season of expectation, anticipation of great joy. Um, but for many, I guess that's not true. Is, is that right, Tom? Right. And uh, there's a lot of stress around the season, as uh, we all probably know, stress at one level or another. Um, but especially for people who have uh, mental health concerns um, and serious mental illness, the stressors are even uh, deeper and um, more critical to be aware of them and to uh, manage them. So uh, I always, and I think one of the things is to be aware that those stresses are there. That's the first step. And I always think of uh, 
when years ago uh, we moved to New Jersey and around Christmas and the holidays, um, there wasn't any family around. And I had always grown up with this great family celebration and all of a sudden now there's no family. And I was going through kind of a blue period and uh, really didn't understand why until after a couple of years, I'm a slow learner, um, it dawned on me. It's because we don't have family to celebrate these holidays like we used to. And so then we made our own family celebration with friends from the neighborhood who are in a condition like uh, our situation, I should say. The other thing that I, I think for families uh, is uh, our daughter who, when she um, exhibited the signs of her mental illness and the holidays would come around, we'd have family uh, get togethers with um, the children and um, our daughter would be very frustrated and have issues of, uh, uh, you know, some anger, some not feeling part of the family because she had her mental illness and, and her uh, intellectual disability didn't allow her to engage in the conversation. So we handled that by saying, um, well, to the family, to our other daughters and their husbands that, you know, there may be uh, some time when there's a crisis and mom or I will take our daughter out and, and walk around the block or do what it is to de-escalate the situation and then we'll come back. So my point is, is that through planning, we didn't see the Christmas celebration or the Thanksgiving celebration Ruin. ruined. We, we managed it and handled it. And so everybody kind of teamed in on that. You mentioned... Uh, so those are just some of the stressors. Tracy, you know a lot of the other stressors as well that go on. Yeah, um, I would say from a NAMI perspective, they've done some research that 64% of the folks who are dealing with a mental health condition actually report that the holidays cause their conditions to worsen. Um, so you've already got folks who are struggling and now with the pressures of expectations, loneliness, stress, economic issues, um, relationships, it just makes it harder. And I will say that we always, from our support groups, we always have an increase in folks coming to meetings in November and December, just in anticipation of what's, what's going on. Um, and I think the pre-planning ideas that Tom was talking about is, is wonderful and it's a great thing to do. Just to almost to be self-aware as to what might happen um, so that you can plan. We always had an escape plan with one of my kids and it worked out really well. Um, anyways, just some ideas. I wonder, are there any others? We mentioned the kind of this awareness, the self-awareness. Uh, what's driving it, what the sources are. You also mentioned kind of pre-planning, um, you know, when the situation becomes maybe too much. Uh, and then this team approach, Tom, you referenced kind of this team approach. You did it with your the daughters and the husbands. Tracy, you mentioned working it out within your family. Uh, are there other resources or strategies that one should think about uh, engaging during these difficult times? Well, I think, you know, again, it, it, part of the planning is managing the situation and, and every situation is unique. So um, like there's certain triggers, there may be triggers that um, you're aware of will cause you stress, will cause you uh, maybe pain over a relationship. So again, it's, it's how do you manage those triggers and how do you um, get it's to a point where you can either um, you know know your limitations, know your boundaries so that you don't uh, if it becomes too much, you know you have a plan like Tracy said, an escape plan to get out of this situation that is a trigger for you. Um, so that would be some of the things. So it's not only for yourself but for your loved one that you have to have this plan or, or recognize yeah. the triggers that may affect yeah. the, may affect the person. Well, it goes back to, well, sorry, I'm just going to say it goes back to talking about it. So a lot of times people go through 
um, these situations um, by themselves, you know, and they don't talk to others. They don't mm -hmm. um, get feedback. They don't discern with others what might be the best way to handle this. But when we do that, when we talk to others and involve others, whether it be family, whether it be friends, um, and pray over that, that is uh, really, really important. Tracy, you were going to say something too. Sorry. Yeah, that was exactly what I was going to say. I, I have found that if you engage your loved ones ahead of time and have them have a voice in the planning, um, they feel a part of it. They feel respected. And honestly, the outcome is, is much less stressful because some of the things you might be thinking they're worried about, they're not. And maybe there's some things that you hadn't even anticipated, but they're self-aware and they bring it up. And so then you can kind of work together. Um, and it's not a one-shot deal. Sometimes you have to have the conversation a few times um, to figure out, okay, how are we going to deal with this, this party we're going to? Or how are we going to deal with getting all these gifts purchased? All those different things, um, if you can collaborate. And I love the idea of praying before you do it because that is always super helpful. And Tracy, could we you pick up on that a little bit? It seemed to be with all of the expectations that are around all of us around the holidays, the list, the priorities, the work, uh, the time crunch. You you talked about prayer. Um, yeah. Uh, you talk, and are there other more things that draw you away from what I'll call the worldly frustrations or anxieties of the holiday that bring you back to a center that could be helpful. Prayer being one, obviously. Yeah, I, I, for me, I always like to start my day with some type of um, spiritual focus. If it's prayer, scripture reading, daily mass, listening to some inspirational podcasts, I think that's super important because to me, anytime there's a feeling of stress or um, intense anxiety, that to me is a signal for I should be praying mm -hmm. because I need that help. And so to reach out um, and to God and take, even if it's just a few seconds to say, Lord, I need you, um, is so beneficial. And sometimes it'll point me to a song. Maybe I need to listen to some inspirational Christian music. Maybe I need to just be quiet and settle my soul. Um, those are just some things that are helpful for me. And we had listed on our screen prayer, gratitude, and, and blessing, uh, being a blessing for others and shifting that attention uh, away from yourself towards others. When we come back after the break, uh, we'll try to identify the resources that might be available to those who are feeling um, stress during this season and, and challenged and looking for some support and we'll talk more. Baptized like I have been baptized Are you Catholic Charities Family Self-Sufficiency Program has assisted thousands of single parents who are working to become more self-sufficient through education and employment opportunities. Our experienced case managers accompany participants for up to five years on their journey to identify, address, and break down barriers to improving their quality of life and achieving meaningful goals for themselves and for their families. Professional, compassionate assistance is offered in a safe and trusting environment as participants develop the skills needed to become financially stable and able to support themselves. Every achievement starts with the decision to try. To learn more about Catholic Charities Family Self-Sufficiency Program, call 847-782-4233 or visit catholiccharities.net. I feel special. <laughs> 
I feel great. I got good grades. We've seen a huge surge in our kids now meeting or exceeding grade level. Come check us out. You may have never thought we were an option before. Our school communities provide students with academic excellence and character education in a supportive and stable learning environment. Come see for yourself. Visit artchicago.org slash find a school. Welcome back to Diaconia. Deacon Jim Norman here with Deacon Dave Brinsick and our guest today, Deacon Tom Lambert and Tracy Sherva from the Mental Health Ministry of the Archdiocese of Chicago. Um, Dave, I think you had some questions as we were going into the break. Yeah, so Tom and Tracy, we were right before the break, we were talking about stressors and being aware of them and helping our loved ones maybe have a plan to, to deal with them, especially during this holiday season. And I some of the suggestions that you, the two of you provided for us were uh, a pause to pray, a time for thanks, to, to be a blessing. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, Tom, maybe you first. Sure. I, I think prayer, as Tracy said, is very important. So beginning the day with morning prayer and however form that might take for you, uh, but being aware of God in your life, and that um, that this day will be a day that you uh, offer up to God. So you'll be a blessing to all the people you uh, encounter. And I think during this time of Advent, you know, it's a time of Mary. And Mary gave birth to Christ, to God. And in a, a sense, you know, we can give birth to Christ in our conversations with people in helping people and caring for people and asking, you know, maybe something simple like, how are you doing? Um, and then listening with a ear for understanding, uh, not problem solving, but just listening to what others are going through, whether they be family members, whether they be people in the pew, what, whoever that might be, just listen and hear what they have to say and accompany them. Let them know you care for them. I think that's so important. And then even praying with them um, is a great, great way, which Tracy said at the very beginning, saying the rosary with her friend was a wonderful way to relieve the stress and be more in tune with God and what God asks for us. Tracy, thoughts? Yeah, you know, um, I love these three tips. Pause to pray, time for thanks be a blessing because it reminds it reminds me about shifting your focus mm -hmm. shifting your perspective so pausing to pray asking for peace remembering that God is here and he loves us and he's here to take care of us we're going to get through it taking that time for thanks shifts my perspective to the things that are going well the beautiful gifts that we have and then that being a blessing really, I feel, takes us out of ourselves and all of our little worries that seem like huge worries and offer us this opportunity to shift it to a much more positive place. Um, that being that listening ear, like Deacon Tom said, or maybe just a little note, a text, something to someone else to brighten their day, to be a blessing for them is it works like double duty, right? Because you're a blessing for them and you also feel better because you've reached out. Um, that's why I love those three. Oh, I'm just and another, way, another thing that can be done, which I think is uh, good, is that because we, we need to involve all our senses, right? So the visual part is very important. And we can, you know, with, with having, you know, we might have a, a Christmas tree with ornaments and everything, but also a crib or a reminder that, um, you know, what is the meaning of the season? 
you know, it's because sometimes I think all the stuff that goes on around it, we need to remind ourselves that the reason they were celebrating this season is the light of Christ coming into the world. And we can be that light and within our heart, but also to other people. So I think something in our home, maybe a sacred space uh, or the crib scene uh, that we can sit in front of and meditate on just a little bit every day and then offer that as our, our way of uh, it being a blessing to others. You know, great suggestions. Are there other resources that, that are available to people who you know, are looking for help during this time of year? Well, one of the one of the resources is our um, on our website, which is www.catholicmhm.org uh, backslash Chicago. That's a mouthful, but um, on there and on our national website, which is the same address but not the Chicago part, um, our prayers. There's different prayers, different uh, things that we can use as tools for uh, managing our stress levels and managing our relationship with God. So there's this each day prayer. And this is a beautiful way. It's written by um, my wife. So uh, I'm obviously I'm not plugging it, but uh, everybody really likes this prayer because it's a, a something that can be said each day. There's 10 things and it's a way of finding God and all the things that are part of our lives. And that's so important. And again, it helps us refocus to what is the reason for the season. And there's other prayers on there as well uh, that we can use. Great. Tracy, any? Yeah, and we're, we also um, will have some tips um, some of the things that we're talking about today, as well as some other ideas on how to manage stress and different things that you can do, um, posted up on the web on the web page as well. Um, yeah, I was going to say, and I do, you know, I don't know what the what's the percentage of people that they estimate with who struggle with mental illness. I mean, I bet maybe people aren't unaware of how common this is. Yeah, that's a good point because um, there's uh, one in uh, five who are experiencing serious mental illness. And um, what's the other in in terms, of, Tracy, in terms of the overall mental health conditions? Well, I believe it's one in five have a mental health issue. And then out of those, one in four have a serious mental health issue. Um, so they're dealing with more serious mental health things, um, illnesses like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder. Um, so but, if you, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say if you think about it, when you're um, when you're at mass and you look down the pew and you think one in five, mm. it, it's really it's really a big number. And I would say mm -hmm. the majority of folks are dealing with depression and anxiety, which has really leaped quite a bit since the pandemic. I think the numbers rose by 40% um, yeah, during the pandemic. Right, and and so I, I think when you think of that, you know, the one in five, um, but there's people in the pews who have relatives who has, so, so the one in five are the actual people who have the uh, mental health challenge but there's also relatives, family members sitting in their pews that are dealing with this and why it's important for us as deacons, as parish leaders to put things in the bulletin about uh, these issues. And uh, because it's people in every day lives of people. And so we as people who can support and through prayer and accompaniment um, need to get that word out there that we're ready to help. The other thing I think that's important to understand is that we are not mental health counselors and we don't have to be. You know, we are people who accompany people. So um, there is a, a community of, um, you know, psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists that can help people. So that's why it's important not to see ourselves as the problem solver, but 
if we detect a, an issue is to be a resource for people and say, hey, you know, here's where you can go to get help. You can, the National Alliance on Mental Illness has great family support programs that can teach you about maybe what a loved one is going through. Um, or the um, 988 number, Tracy, maybe we can talk a little bit about the 988 number. Yeah, so Illinois has a number of hotlines or warm lines that people can call if they are in an emergency situation. And this this is for family members too. So the recent rollout of 988 is the, um, it's the emergency mental health number um, for suicide prevention and for mental health crisis. And if you or a loved one call that number, it doesn't mean automatically an ambulance shows up at your door. There are people on the line who are trained um, folks to talk with you kind of diffuse the situation and figure out what steps really are needed. Because sometimes you just need to talk it through with someone mm -hmm. or you need a referral to a mental health um, hospital or a psychiatrist. Um, sometimes you do need to go to the emergency room. Um, then there's 911, which is for more um, traditional type emergency safety situations. 211 and 311 are our um, resource support hotlines. Um, this is a great graphic that explains the different things. And then there's the Illinois warm line, which is that 866 number. Um, and this is for folks, I know folks that call this number because they're lonely and they need someone to talk to. They're wonderful people to just talk and kind of work through some things. Um, so folks are not alone. Um, and then there, there's also resources for if you need housing, clothes, you know, all those types of things. Catholic Charities is also a great place to call. Now, I'm, there's also a monthly call that uh, is ho that's hosted by by your ministry on Tuesdays. Yes, there's a a prayer evening um, on the fourth Tuesday of every month. And that's on our website too, the information about that, how people can sign up. And it's, it's a, um, Lexio is prayer form is Lexio Divina. So it's that particular evening every month. It's not a discussion group, but it's a reflection group. And what's important about that again, is that the, one of the best things we can do for our uh, mental health overall is prayer and reflection. And so we use like an upcoming gospel and we reflect on what that means for us individually. And so it's really about our relationship with God as seen through that particular reading for that month. Um, but again, it's a time to get away from the busyness of the world to relax and to pray um, like in the Lexio Divina form, which is um, listening to the gospel, it's not gospel study or Bible study, it's but listening with the ear of the heart. Thank and that's you. what that is for. Thank you, Tom. And thank, thank you, Tracy, for sharing these resources. Hopefully, the sharing of this information and the resources will help us all to have a joyful holiday season, Advent and Christmas, and to help others do the same. So we want to thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you for the resources and the information you've shared with us today. Yes, thank you so much and have a blessed Advent. Have a blessed Advent and a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Cop that.